Hello, my friends. Someone sent me a request about how to get an associate of theirs out of the two by two sect cult organization. And I reflected on it and realized that would be a good uh, podcast to make is two by two extraction. How do you do it? So let's get on with it. Well, first is there are different situations for a person who's in two by twos and that requires different extraction methodologies. So I'm gonna start at the first, is that say that you have a spouse who is in two by twos and you wanna get them out. <clears throat> now this is gonna be the easiest of all the cases. <clears throat> so the, the thing is you wanna do exactly to the your two by two spouse as what your two by two spouse is going to try to do to you, which is, love bomb them the thing is though instead of love bombing with them with the two by two uh network you're going to love bomb them with an alternative christian denomination network so the first order of business is you better get yourself highly ensconced inside a legitimate christian church in your neighborhood right and that means you have to know that faith pretty well and that you have to be involved with the social network there such that you know you have a lot of friends in that church you are, are involved in a lot of the the social groups like the you're on the prayer group you're on the the shawl group you're on the uh, altar guild you're whatever <clears throat> whatever the groups are you're involved why because that's how you know people that's how you get to know people right you're in the in, in the Bible study groups there and so forth. So you get to know what's going on and you become part of it. You become an accepted part. So when you walk into the room, people say, oh, hi, Mary. Oh, it's so good. How are you? And they give you hugs and all this stuff. OK, this is all important. It's not trivial because. After you're fully ensconced. Then you can in, you can ask your spouse, hey, you know. They're doing a Bible study at our church. It's on Tuesday nights. You're not doing anything Tuesday nights. Why don't you come with me? Why? They're, they're, we're studying the book of Romans. That's your favorite book. You know, we should we should work together. It'd be so nice for us to work together and study together. It'd be just like old times when we started our marriage, blah, 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 whatever. Okay? You get your spouse to start coming to these social or... Uh, theological or whatever events within your church that way your spouse will see oh my goodness there are actually people outside the two by twos who are christians who actually know something about the bible actually they're going to learn no more than that they're going to find out that these people in your denomination at these bible studies know a way 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 more than the uh they're two by twos okay because remember, every two by two thinks that only two by twos know the Bible. That everyone else is like reading some other book, you know, <laughs> like that's not even they're totally confused. So they have a huge two by twos are very, very prideful about this. They think they're the Bible experts. OK, of course, they're not. They're totally ignoramuses. But so this is why you get them to expose them to these actual people, who, normal people who know the Bible pretty well. And the, the, the scales will start to fall from your two by two spouse. And then they will also start to say, well, you know, I really like, you know, uh, Jane and John from from your church. Like, they're a really nice couple. And they, they invite us to do these things. And I'm really enjoying my time. And they're they're good Christians. They're not swearing. They're not, you know, drunk. They're not doing drugs. They're like really they're, they're conservative in their dress. They're like, wow, I didn't ever think this was possible. I guess there really are people of God. Right. That's the next thing, realizing that, oh, my goodness, there are people out there who are not two by twos who, well, why aren't they going? To, they would be going to heaven, wouldn't they? So how can da, 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 da doesn't compute? Remember, only two by twos are going to heaven in their head. So this is the path. So my point at the beginning of saying this is if you want to extract your spouse from two by twos, you have to yourself be ensconced in a legitimate Christian church and you know the faith well there. And you are uh, ensconced in the social networks there. If if you just don't know anything about a church and you say, you know, Mary 
or you know john let's go to uh this presbyterian church down the road i heard i heard they got a good preacher there let's go that's not going to cut it okay because you're just as much an outsider as your spouse going in there you don't know what's going on okay the, your the point is you need to be able to welcome your spouse into this your own social network and the social network has to be superior to the one that she he or she has at a two by twos believe me once you crack that nut you break down the exclusivity nut you break down the prideful nut all these things that the the cracks happen the cognitive dissonance happens and you open the door to get them out okay well that's how you get rid of a, how you get a spouse out of two by two so there's something more on my website about how to do this but um Let's move on to the next type. So the more common, uh, how do you get your get someone on two by twos is if you have a friend who's in two by twos. Now this is more difficult because you don't have as much, con let's say influence over them because they're not your spouse, they're a friend. They can just say, oh yeah, thanks Mary. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for the advice. Yeah, thanks for the, for the, uh, for the for the invitation but i'm going to pass on this one right so you you the same approach that you use on a, your spouse but it's going to be more difficult because you have less influence over them but what you can do is say you know mary let's do a bible study just you and me right and you, you better be well learned in your bible because they think they're the bible expert <laughs> So, um, again, we have resources on our website about how to become Bible literate, uh, and you should have, use them. But so you, you, if you can do that, if you can say, listen, they, they agree. Well, okay, why not? Well, you know, because well, why would they agree to do a Bible study with you? Because they think they're going to convert you to two by two is, um, that's why they're going to dazzle, razzle, dazzle you with their Bible knowledge and you're going to, or the magical thing will happen and the Holy Spirit will come down and tell you right there, well, you got to join two by twos, okay? They don't, this is how foolish they are. So you can use that opening for you to demonstrate to them that they don't know anything about what they're talking about, about their Bible, okay? So, you, <clears throat> but you better be knowledgeable. You better be knowledgeable, okay? Again, you can, if, if you can't get them to do that, you might, it might, you invite them to your church's social function, so not like a Bible study, because they probably won't go for that. Because they're, uh, but you can invite them to say, like, you know, our church is having uh, a rummage sale. You should come. Right? Okay, rummage sale. Well, they can come and buy some things, and then they, you know, you could. That's your whole point is then introduce them to people at your church, and kind of tell the people at your church, like, this is my friend who's in this cult, and I want to get them out, so I want you to love bomb them, right? So rent much sale, they come, they meet people, and then you had then like you know a couple of weeks say, you know, so I'm, me and some of the ladies at the that you met rent said we're going to do such and such an activity. Would you like to come? Right. Slowly get them, get this person into your social network with your church people, and then you know invite them out for lunch and say, you know, we're having um at lunch we're doing like a. 10 minute talk about impromptu talk about um, Bible study, a Bible study, right? My point is you want to get these, your, your friend in a situation where their prideful, ignoramus position about how they're an expert on the Bible is challenged, right? You got to make them feel that they don't know, they don't know anything, okay? Once that, once they, they realize that they are not the expert on the Bible. Start the cracks start happening. Remember, they maintain this fiction in their head that they're an expert on the Bible by never engaging in any Bible conversation with anybody outside the two by twos. So that's the key thing. You engage, somehow you need to get them engaged in that conversation. I mean, it, it will work well. So it's a sort of it's like I said, it's a similar sort of functionality as the spouse thing but it has a slightly different uh, attack method because of the um the lack of influence you have as a friend versus being a spouse now if you're a child 
and you want to get your parents out of two by twosm, and let's so assume that you're a child under the age of 18, your own your best choice, I mean, you can use these same attack methods we just mentioned, these tactics, or and and or you can use um the, the process of trying to get them to be discredited in the eyes of the two by two ministers to create conflict between your parents and the two by two ministers. Now, it, if you're quite young, look, if you're if you're 18 or whatever, 16 to 18, you can probably use the methods I mentioned for spouse or for friend because you have the mental capabilities maybe at that age to to do that. But if you're younger, you probably don't have those capabilities. And so the approach is to try to get your parents into conflict with the two by two ministers. And you do that by yourself becoming a problem in the meetings. Right? You make a, a lot of, let's say, conflict in the meetings so that the two by two ministers are coming and reprimanding your parents. And but you yourself have to be, you know, very good in all other aspects of your life. It's just in the meetings you're doing things. Now I don't mean about you know throwing things around and causing noise. I mean basically behaving as a as a Christian in the meetings, right? So you're reading prayers from the Book of Common Prayer. You're, you know, saying Hail Marys. You're um, re saying the Our Father prayer. Things that normal Christians do, you do that in the two-by-two two meetings. That's going to cause conflict between the ministers and your parents, okay? There's more on our website about this if you're interested. Okay, so... The final um, sort of situation is if you have a friend who is a two by two minister. Now, all of which applies to regular two by twos is going to apply in spades to a two by two minister, meaning that there's the two by two minister thinks they are ultra experts uber experts on the bible okay um and they don't even really hear you when you talk about the bible they're just thinking well you're just a babbling sheep and you know the minister themselves is like an expert par excellence so this is going to be difficult because they're going to they're going to discredit much of what you say no matter how learned you are about the bible so you have you're going to have to be very very learned about the bible new testament in particular um to to be able to get engage in conversation with them um and you can give them books to read they won't read them okay you could say well maybe you yourself are not unable to articulate certain concepts and you say well i'm going to give them a book and hopefully that will you know create cause and dissonance for them but they won't read the books okay they, they they are closed they close their mind to anything which might cause cognitive dissonance and there's no and why wouldn't they 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 themselves are secure inside their little bubble, and they, of course, know better than you, as and they, as they think. And uh, they're not. Why would they read something you suggest? You you are clearly don't know anything, and that's how they think. So you have to use trickery. So you have to get them to uh, in, be in, um, say clandestinely involved in. Uh, Bible studies or impromptu Bible studies with people who are knowledgeable and usually run by a pastor of another church, right? Now, first thing, you're going to have to get yourself, um, find a church where you got a knowledgeable pastor, right? And again, you're not going to go find Pentecostals or any of these kind of crazy people. You're going to have to find legitimate churches. And I think if you listen to other podcasts, you'll know by now what kind of legitimate churches we're talking about. And you want to um, to get this two by two minister involved somehow into a, s a small group with these pastors. You're basically going to have to play up the two by two minister's pride to get them involved, to get them to think that there's an opportunity for the two by two minister to convert people in these small little Bible studies. All right. So this is. A chance for the two by two minister to show that they, the two by two minister, is the expert par excellence. Right? That's the trick: is to appeal to their vanity 
and get them to try to show off. Of course, when they get in the actual position of in these meetings, they're what is the Bible study means they're going to be they're going to be the person on the receiving end, right? Because they they aren't an expert. But the trick is to get them to play to their vanity. Now they're of course they're very um, cautious about uh, you know being exposed to actual pastors from other denominations because they feel like that's the devil, right? So again, you have to be very careful about this. Um, you can one again. You you may not uh, you may have different situations with a two by two minister in regards to the two by two minister's understanding or belief set about the origins of the two by two group, right? So you may have one of these ministers that uh, thinks it came started in thirty three A D, and you maybe have ones who think it's a restorative uh, uh, movement, right? The thing is here, I think in both cases, if you could get them to um, to read or talk to you about the early church fathers, the apostolic fathers, and again, we have a, it's already on a podcast about this and it's on the website. And you should, you should get yourself pretty uh, versed in this material also so that you could show them like, hey, you know, there's, it's not like the New Testament was the end of the writings. There's an enormous amount of documentation about what actually a New Testament church was like by people who were actually there at the time. It just had, happens to not be in a New Testament for a variety of reasons. Um, that will start to throw uh, cognitive dissonance in these two by two ministers' minds, right? Because in their brain, the New Testament is the end all be all of information there there is no other information right after that because you remember two by two ministers they, they're history illiterate just like all two by twos so we show them like wow there's actually enormous amounts of writings about what what the church was like and that's why you know by the way that's why the catholics and the orthodox and the lutherans and the anglicans use both the bible and tradition because the tradition part is actually from those early new testament times by you they have all this writings also from the same period that you can read right so i think that's good material um you can come at them i mean some people will suggest you should come at the two by two ministers and ask them about this child sexual assault try to see like well how can you justify being a minister of this group with all this child sexual assault i mean you there you might get some of these people to say yeah i, I it seems bad and so forth but many of them are, are are so wedded to the system. And as well, you know, no one I know did that. And that's even if they actually do know people who did that. They, But they're, they're going to play, you know, oh, it's just a few bad apples, right? It's not me. So, uh, well, it's just common, right? People, it's a circle of wagons response. So you, you, you're putting them in a defensive position at, and asking them to, be objective about a matter which they're not going to be you know, they've been wedded to this all their lives right they got a lot of incentives to stick with it the thing is though as i mentioned is to play to their vanity play to their vanity so to get them to um to expose themselves expose their um what they think is their greatest accomplishment which is their expertise on the bible to expose that as a fraud. And so you have to get them into a position where that can happen, right? Imagine how, how horrible they're gonna feel when they they know, know so little. And, and not just on a one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, if you know if I sat down a two by two minister and I was knowledgeable and I you know de demonstrated they're a fraud, they don't, they, it maybe hurts them a little bit inside, cause a little bit of problem, but, but they, are very, you know, in a good situation because only they and I saw this this exposure or fraud, as opposed to if it was done in a more public setting where there's, you know, five, ten other people and people that whose opinion mattered to them, right? Other two by twos, maybe one or two like yourself uh, or whatever, someone there. That That's a major problem for them, right? I mean, just think about how many times have you seen two by two ministers engage in public discussion or debate or whatever with an uh um someone else they refuse right you'd think they should be glad to do that to demonstrate that way would be a way to demonstrate their own two by two 
flock that they are actual experts in the matter, but they never do this because, well, they have a lot of reasons which have nothing to do with reality, but the primary reason is they don't want to be, they, that if they do it, they'll be exposed as a fraud. So you need to manipulate the situation to get it to such that they are exposed as a fraud. Okay. So those are the, <clears throat> the basic tactics. And you can see now what I'm talking about is uh, you can't really, in all cases, you're not really going to go at the, when you're trying to you know extract someone from two by twos, you're not trying to do it with arguments, like with um, logical arguments, because if it was, if it came to logical arguments, no one would be in a cult. That's not what you're dealing with here. You're dealing with emotions and programming. So you've got to, uh, come at it from a from an emotional perspective, right? You got to need to play their own emotions against them, uh, and that's always the most effective. So, if that's helpful, I'm glad, and you can check our website out for more information.